Baylor's Jacoby Walter will be a top 10 pick in the 2024 NBA Draft. This is Florence Ceiling, let's break him down. Jacoby Walter's calling card, at least early on in his NBA career, is going to be his three-point shooting. The Baylor guard is currently making about 37% of his threes while shooting a little under six per game. These are impressive numbers, both in terms of attempts and makes, but what I really want to stress here is that Walter can make difficult looks while on the move. Jacoby has on-balance, textbook mechanics, and a fairly quick release. He's not the tallest at about 6 foot 5, but that's okay for a 2 guard, and then he has really long arms with a 6 foot 10 wingspan. Walter can get into these movement threes going both left and right, which is important versatility, and NBA teams are gonna love using him out of pin downs and off ball action. For example, I like when he cuts baseline, as we can see here and he makes defenses pay when they give him even a slither of space. Walter is also a cheat code on baseline out of bounds plays. We've seen that time and time again in his freshman season at Baylor, and this right here is a good example. Naturally, Jacoby is also very dependable on easier spot up and catch and shoot looks. With his combination of volume and conversion, Walter is a nice fit in today's NBA next to other point guards, but also importantly, bigger primary initiator stars. I think that imagining him next to somebody like a Jason Tatum, Nikola Jokic, or Giannis Antetokounmpo is pretty straightforward. As a freshman, about 90% of his threes have been assisted, Though, keep in mind, that's also accounting for his movement threes, and not only his stationary looks. Teams won't have to work hard to create spacing around Walter, because he should already give them that almost immediately with his gravity from the three-point line. In my opinion, it's not crazy to envision, down the line, Walter shooting 40% from deep. As we'll get into, it's true that he's not much of a self-creator right now, but that's fine early in his career, and it's a relatively safe long-term median outcome. At this point, if I was pressed, I would compare Jacoby to a slightly smaller Moses Moody coming out of Arkansas. However, I can also see similarities to someone like Kentavious Caldwell Pope, who every NBA team would love on their roster. When it comes to prospects who light it up from deep, it's always important to discuss what else they can bring to the table. To be clear, I have no worries about Walter from deep. He puts up very solid numbers on high volume, for 100 possessions he takes 11 threes, and that's on a shot diet which I think is translatable to NBA success. At this point, about 51% of his total shots come from beyond the arc, which makes a lot of sense for him now and down the line. This is also on a deeper trajectory than just Baylor, as Jacoby showed during his high school days that he is reliable from three. However, in today's league, there are very few players who only take threes and don't do much of anything else. I don't find Walter to be one of those prospects, but I wanted to share my philosophy there to get into how Jacoby can counter defenses when they close out on him. We've already seen some flashes which I feel positive about in regards to how the Baylor guard attacks a hard closeout. Walter can put the ball on the floor for a couple of dribbles and use his length and touch to finish. In general, I find his process to be encouraging. He forces defenses to rotate when he's aggressive off the catch, and he's able to both pass and score a little bit. Jacoby is not the most athletic as we'll get into shortly, but he's smart about getting to two feet into a midi or drawing free throws from there. However, going forward, I do want to see improvement at the rim. Walter is making about 71% of his shots at the basket, but that's only on 25 makes in 18 games, which is low volume. At this juncture, less than 2 in 10 of his total shots come at the basket. 
As I said earlier, I do like Jacoby's length, but he lacks explosiveness and physicality as an athlete. The Baylor prospect is not someone who's going to blow past his defender, and he struggles to play in traffic still. So even though I don't consider that he has to live at the rim or anything like that, this is an important improvement point. In the NBA, Walter will only be facing better, quicker, bigger, and longer defenders. Still, I think Jacoby has shown just about enough for me to feel like he has untapped potential as a finisher. As I mentioned earlier, making 71% of his shots at the basket is worth paying attention to, even if it does come on few attempts. I want to see him get more comfortable in this area, but in the NBA, even if he's only taking 15-20% to of his shots at the rim, I think he'll be fine. Again, Walter does a solid job at getting to two feet inside the paint, and even though he's not the most dynamic athlete, he's shown to me that he can change speeds and direction a little bit. It's through this slowing down, more than anything, that Jacoby gets to the free throw line. He shoots slightly more than four foul shots a game, which is decent, and he's making them at an 85% clip. Continuing to explore his self-creation, Walter has increasingly gotten more reps from the mid-range and out of screens. The numbers have not quite been there for him as a freshman, he's shooting about 34% on two-point jumpers, but I do appreciate the willingness and the volume. Ultimately for me, the biggest hindrances for Jacoby's productivity here are his athleticism and his handle. Walter cannot bully or burst past defenders, so he's reliant on screens to create space. And even though he can handle the ball some, his hands are not dynamic enough to truly be shifty as a pull-up shooter. As a result, Jacoby's looks can be tough, and the defenders do not have that many complications getting back into the play to contest his jumper. However, I'm optimistic in this area. Walter has shown flashes at the college level, but also in high school when he had the ball in his hands even more. His handle is not advanced and it needs work, but he's shown to me that he can be effective out of just a few dribbles. Right now, I think this is particularly the case from deep, but hopefully it should also be the case once he faces more drop coverage in the NBA. Reducing his touches as a ball handler coming out of screens will be important for Jacoby, but I think he can get there. I think he reads the game well as a scorer, and he has a clear process whenever he gets these chances to create his own shot, be it from 3 or from the mid-range. As I pointed out in my preseason mock draft video, Jacoby displayed this ability to create his own shot going back to high school at Link Academy. It's important, especially in a draft like this one where the margins can be so thin between prospects, to also analyze other contexts. Jacoby has a slightly different role at Baylor, more geared towards catching and shooting from three, but in my opinion he was used more on the ball at Link Academy. You kinda have to squint, but the potential is there for Walter to be somewhat of a three-level scorer. The efficiency at the rim is there, but not the volume. The flashes from the mid-range exist, but not the conversion right now. And clearly, he's a very good three-point shooter. I'm not saying he'll necessarily get there in all three areas, but I see real glimpses. So even if that doesn't happen, and there are just gradual improvements, I can see him returning top 5 value in this draft, and maybe being more comparable to a Tim Hardaway Jr. type of player. In order to get there, Jacoby's work in the pick and roll will need to keep growing. Right now, he is okay at best. I think he has some instincts, but his processing time reading defenses and reacting to events is too slow. He's also definitely much more of a scorer than he is a facilitator, but he doesn't consistently gain access to the best angles for either option. Walter's handle is still somewhat mechanical and plodding, which sets him back. And since he can struggle to read defenses still, he's not a natural playmaker at all.
Defensively, I've been slightly underwhelmed by what Jacoby Walter has displayed so far. My biggest issue is how he's really struggled to contain attackers off the bounce. Time and time again this season, Jacoby has given up straight line drives to the rim, offering little to no resistance. Despite his 6 foot 10 wingspan, Walter is 6 foot 5 and he's largely been used against guards on defense. In these situations, Jacoby simply has not shown to me that he has the foot speed to keep up. He has long arms, but he's too far removed from the play to use them, and I feel like this would be an even bigger issue, at least early on, in the NBA. Like I mentioned on offense, Walter is not a very good athlete. He has a slow first step, and he doesn't love physicality. His hips also take a wild turn, so his reaction time is lacking and this really manifests on the defensive end. In 18 games this season, Jacoby has 25 steals and blocks combined, which leaves a fair bit to be desired. Theoretically, this lack of foot speed could be less of an issue against wings. In today's NBA though, the top wings have legit explosiveness and ball handling, so I feel like Jacoby would struggle there too, plus give up size. Away from the ball, I've seen some more encouraging signs, although nothing massive. Walter is not necessarily a bad defender in how he reads the game, I actually think he's okay in this department, but his tools give him little margin for error. At times, his 6 foot 10 wingspan definitely does come into play. When he's attentive off the ball, Walter can get stops or steals, and he's shown some ability in the passing lanes. It's also worth noting that I don't think Baylor has necessarily negatively been impacted by Walter's defense. His box plus minus is the third highest on the team, and statistically, he prevents a solid amount of points. However, he hasn't passed the eye test for me. In the NBA, I'm just unsure about where he slots in on defense to actually be impactful. Unlike someone like KCP, who I brought up earlier in the video, I would not trust Walter on smaller guards. He has time to improve, but I really think that his athleticism and explosiveness can hurt him. Down the line, he should be okay, but I need to be convinced that he'll add real value. Offensively though, I really like Walter's package. I love how he can fill it up from three in various ways, and I have real faith in him to keep developing as a pull-up shooter off the dribble. As he gets stronger, more deceptive, and improves his handle, I expect even more flashes to occur. Jacoby's volume at the rim is low, but it doesn't need to be sky high, and his conversion is already pretty good with soft touch, which I trust. Right now, he's hovering between 6 and 9 on my big board, and I see him as a surefire top 10 pick. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think of Jacoby Walter, and if you enjoyed the channel, if you want to watch more content like this, make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll catch you guys next time.